My name is San Jacob Ta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a, um, a video on a very interesting but potentially very dangerous condition called pulmonary hypertension. I refer to this condition as interesting for three main reasons. And the first is that most heart disease tends to affect older patients, but pulmonary hypertension can also affect younger people. Uh, the second reason why it's interesting is that the symptoms in the early stages of this condition can be non-specific and not very dramatic, and therefore uh, they may not get get taken um, as they may not be taken as seriously as they should by both the patient and the doctor, and therefore uh, the diagnosis can be delayed for several years. Um, and the third thing is that the treatment available for this condition can be extremely effective, but it is most effective if it is started at an early stage of the condition. But unfortunately, because the symptoms become more noticeable and dramatic during the latter stages of the condition, often patients, by the time they're diagnosed, have gone to a severe stage, and in those patients, the treatment is not as effective, and therefore, these patients can have missed the boat, so to speak. And this is why it's so important. So I'm hoping that this video may help those people who have, may have noticed some of the symptoms associated with this condition uh, and to encourage them to go and ask for a detailed assessment by a cardiologist. Okay, so what is pulmonary hypertension? Okay, in the simplest sense, it means that it is harder for the heart to pump blood into the lungs. Uh, it is therefore diagnosed by finding evidence of a higher blood pressure in the artery that takes the blood from the heart to the lungs. This artery is known as the pulmonary artery. In general, the pressure in the pulmonary artery is usually no higher than 25 millimeters of mercury in a normal person. If we find that the pressures in the pulmonary artery are higher than 25, then a diagnosis of pulmonary hypertension can be made. Okay, The higher the pressure, the more severe the pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension is not a disease as such. It is uh, the consequence of a variety of underlying disease processes, some of which I will discuss later in this video. So lots of conditions can cause pulmonary hypertension, but the pulmonary hypertension itself uh, can be dangerous as well. So the first thing to try and work, well, I guess the next question to try and address is what are the symptoms associated with pulmonary hypertension? Uh, because if a person recognizes these symptoms, then they can get the help. And if they can get the help, then they can get the treatment and the treatment is more likely to be effective. So the problem um, with um, uh, pulmonary hypertension is that there is difficulty uh, for the heart to get blood into the lungs to be oxygenated. Okay, so there's difficulty in trying to get the blood into the lungs to be oxygenated. So in the very, very early stages of this condition, there may be no symptoms. However, as the difficulty to try and get blood into the lungs increases, the first symptoms uh, uh, start becoming apparent on exercise because that's when the heart, when the when the body needs more oxygen, and that's when more, um, the blood really needs to get to the lungs quickly to try and collect the oxygen. And so most of the symptoms of a difficulty in the blood getting to the lungs will first be noticed on exercise. Uh, and they're usually due to a lack of oxygen in the body. Okay, uh, Patients will notice that they're progressively more tired, weaker, and they're starting to find they're getting more breathless on doing the kind of activities that would ordinarily not have caused them to be breathless. Because these symptoms are mild, patients may often think, oh, I'm just unfit, I'm just deconditioned. They may go to their doctor and the doctor may say, oh, you just need to lose a little bit of weight, you just need to train a bit harder. And therefore, these symptoms can often be ignored. As it becomes more difficult for the heart to pump blood into the lungs, uh, the symptoms become more noticeable. So uh, you may start noticing symptoms on less exercise. You may even start noticing the symptoms uh, at rest. Uh, other symptoms that can include uh, that may occur include chest pain. So in uh, pulmonary hypertension, the heart, the right heart, is having to ha work much harder to try and get blood to the lungs to collect the oxygen. So the right heart is a working much harder. B there's a lack of oxygen, and therefore the right heart may not necessarily get the 
amount of oxygen it itself needs to do the work it is doing and therefore that may manifest with chest pain okay chest discomfort on exertion um, similarly uh, you can also have blackouts which can be quite a dangerous symptom uh, again lack of blood lack of blood going to the brain the brain uh, goes without blood and the patient blacks out other uh, less common symptoms are uh, a dry cough sometimes and sometimes exercise induced nausea and vomiting so patients starts exercising they start feeling very nauseous start vomiting that's another symptom you know these are non-specific symptoms just because you've noticed these symptoms doesn't automatically mean you have pulmonary hypertension but if you notice these symptoms there's, there's no really good explanation and the symptoms continue to bother you it is always worth getting checked out just to have this condition excluded when the pulmonary um, the problem is when the pulmonary hypertension gets really severe okay so it's really difficult for the right heart to get the blood through the right heart having worked harder with less oxygen will start tiring and when the right heart starts tiring everything gets worse because there is no longer anything trying to push this blood into the lungs and therefore um, this condition is called right heart failure where the right heart no longer works as hard to try and get the blood into the lungs uh, and this is a very dangerous condition because even if you develop right heart failure even if you then identify the cause of the pulmonary hypertension the right heart may not and treat the cause of the pulmonary hypertension the right heart may never recover as the right heart starts weakening it's not able to pump as much blood to the lungs which means that the blood from the rest of the body coming into can't get into the right heart so this blood will pool out into the legs into the stomach and the patient may uh, notice progressive swelling of the legs progressive swelling of the abdomen with water edema uh, and this is often a symptom which then leads the patient to go and seek help but unfortunately by that time the condition is at a very advanced stage and therefore the prognosis tends to be worse why does it happen uh, there are a variety of causes of pulmonary hypertension to try and make it easy to understand uh, we first need to think of how blood moves around the body okay normally uh, the left heart uh, will pump blood into the body except the lungs uh, which the the blood then from the body comes into the right heart from the right heart it will get pumped into the lungs and from the lungs it would go into the left heart and from the left heart it will go to the body that's how the normal flow works so if let's say the left heart is weak okay so if the left heart is for any reason weak the left heart doesn't pump out blood to the body as effectively which means that the blood from the lungs can't go into the left heart that means that there's a higher pressure in the lungs because the blood can't get into the left heart because the left heart is already full and therefore it's more difficult for the right heart to pump blood into the lungs because of the back pressure that would be a cause of pulmonary hypertension so left heart disease can cause pulmonary hypertension um, so what kind of left heart diseases left heart weakness left heart failure cardiomyopathy um, a problem with the left heart valve so a leaky valve or a tight valve all these things make it more difficult for the left heart to pump blood out which means that the back pressure causes it more diff makes it more difficult for the right heart to pump blood into the lungs that would cause pulmonary hypertension again congenital heart disease if you were born with a big hole in your heart that can also do this in this situation the treatment is to address the problem with the left heart okay that if you treat the left heart then the pulmonary hypertension will get better another cause for pulmonary another set of causes for pulmonary hypertension is if you have bad lungs for any reason so if you have bad lungs it becomes more difficult for the right heart to pump blood into the lungs that will cause pulmonary hypertension common conditions include things like copd emphysema bronchitis sleep apnea lung fibrosis in this situation what you have to do is treat the lung condition if you treat the lung condition the pulmonary hypertension uh, stabilizes or gets better another cause another uh, cause is if there's a mechanical obstruction uh, stopping blood from get from 
actually stopping the blood from getting through into the lungs. So if something is obstructing the blood from getting through into the lungs, it makes it harder for the right heart to pump blood into the lungs. Uh, the commonest cause of this is recurrent blood clots. So some people may have recurrent blood clots that they may not ne necessarily know anything about, but over a period of time, these blood clots form and they stop blood from getting through to the lungs. And this makes it harder for the right heart to pump blood. You get the pulmonary hypertension. And therefore, if you have a, a patient, if I get a patient with pulmonary hypertension, one of the very important things I have to do is to make sure that they're not having lung clots. And if they do have lung clots, then you treat that by putting them on blood thinning medication for the rest of their life. Sometimes if you have a very big lung clot, it may be possible to mechanically fish the clot out, relieving the obstruction, and that would improve the pulmonary hypertension. Then there is a really interesting group of patients in whom the pulmonary hypertension occurs because of disease of the pulmonary artery itself. Remember, the pulmonary artery is the vessel that's taking the blood from the right heart to the lungs. If that vessel is in some way diseased, if it's stiffened, if that vessel and its branches are stiffened or um, thickened, narrowed, uh, then they could make it harder for the blood to get through the, the lungs and this would cause pulmonary hypertension. This may happen because a patient has connective tissue disease. A common condition is systemic sclerosis or scleroderma. A systemic sclerosis, you can get this kind of problem where the pulmonary arteries get affected, their branches get affected. It becomes more difficult for the heart to then pump blood into the lungs. There is um, another condition in which you don't find any other cause, any other underlying cause, but their pulmonary arteries are in some way diseased and therefore don't allow the blood to get through as easily. And this condition where you don't find any other cause uh, is called primary pulmonary hypertension. Okay, It's termed primary pulmonary arterial hypertension and it tends to affect young people and more women than men and this is a really important condition uh, because it's really important to identify these people who have a problem with their pulmonary artery and their arterials because in those people there are some new treatments which have been shown to make a huge difference to their outcome. Um, Remember, in the previous other uh, situations I mentioned, you have to treat the underlying cause. Here, there's no underlying cause. So if you can give them medications which make these pulmonary arteries more stretchy, open them up, it allows blood to get through and the pulmonary hypertension gets better. Uh, such medications are now available. There's been rapid kind of development, and these are amazing medications which have made a huge difference. These medications include Viagra. Viagra opens up the blood vessels of the pulmonary artery and can help. Bosentan, and then there are these prostacycline analogs. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later. Uh, so the next question is, well, if you suspect you have pulmonary hypertension, how do you diagnose it? How does a doctor diagnose pulmonary hypertension? The, well, you have to measure the pressure in the pulmonary artery. And therefore, the gold standard investigation is to take a catheter, a pressure catheter, put it in one of the veins in the leg, pass it all the way up to the right heart, and from the right heart, pass it into the pulmonary artery, and then connect it to a pressure manometer and measure the pressure. And that is the gold standard. The problem, however, is that this is a very specialist and invasive investigation, and therefore we can't offer it to everyone who complains of a bit of breathlessness and tiredness. You know, a lot of people, the majority of people who feel breathless and tired may actually just be unfit or deconditioned or may have something else. They may not have pulmonary hypertension. So you don't want to put everyone who complains of something like that through an invasive uh, test like uh, right heart catheterization or pulmonary artery measurement. So an easier and non-invasive way to measure the pulmonary artery pressure is by using echocardiography or cardiac ultrasound. Uh, on cardiac ultrasound, you can visualize the right heart very clearly. When people have pulmonary hypertension, often what happens is some of the valves on the right side, the pulmonary valve and also the tricuspid valve become a little bit more leaky. Most people have a little bit of leaky anyway, but if you have pulmonary hypertension, the back pressure causes more leaking. So what you can do using echo is you can measure the velocity of that leak. The velocity of the leak will be directly proportional to the pressure driving the leak. And therefore, we can use the Doppler uh, to measure the velocity. And then you can put that velocity into a mathematical formula called Bernoulli's equation. 
and therefore you can then derive a pressure difference. And this way you can get a reasonably uh, accurate indication of pulmonary artery pressures. The problem is if you don't have a leak or if there is no leak, you cannot categorically say there's no pulmonary hypertension. You just can't use echo to measure it. So just because uh, someone turns around and says, oh, your echo is fine, there's no leak, that doesn't mean you don't have pulmonary hypertension. But if you do have a leak and you can measure the velocity, then that gives you a good indication of what the pulmonary artery pressures are. What treatment. Uh, once you've identified the pulmonary hypertension, the next thing is to look for the cause and assess the left heart, assess the lungs, make sure there are no lung clots, look for connective tissue disease. Where there's no underlying cause and you believe that the problem is mainly in the pulmonary artery, the disease of the pulmonary artery is called pulmonary arterial hypertension, then uh, these patients benefit from the, these vasodilators, vasodilator therapy like Viagra, etc. Uh, and they should all be managed in a pulmonary hypertension center. In the UK, we have big pulmonary hypertension centers. Um, certainly in my hospital, we tend to refer them either to Newcastle or Sheffield. Um, now, in this group, we have, uh, you know, modern day technology, all the advances in medicine have made a huge difference. Okay, these patients had a prognosis of only 30 to 40 percent at three years from diagnosis. Um, and that was only about 10 or 15 years ago. Now these medications have come, they open up the pulmonary arteries and the prognosis has gone up from those dismal values to about 80 to 90 percent at three years. Uh, and therefore, it becomes very important that we are all vigilant of this condition. We take our symptoms seriously and go and seek um, a specialist, uh, a specialist's advice at an early stage. And that's it about pulmonary hypertension. This was requested by someone who uh, was very kind and has been very patient. So this is for you. Uh, I hope you found this useful. I would love to hear your. Um, please consider sharing the video if you think it may benefit and also please consider subscribing to my channel. I'll put a transcript of this video on my website which is drsanjayguptacardiologist.com. If you want to speak with me you can do so via my Facebook page uh, which is at your cardiologist, a, it's a, at your cardiologist. I try and do some uh, live Facebook chats uh, once every week. So if you want to ask me any questions, you can do those. It's completely free. You can ask me any questions you like, and I try and answer it. And finally, if you wanted to consult with me, you can do so via my website, uh, which is yourcardiology.co.uk. Thank you so much, and I wish you a great evening. Take care.